God bless you. God bless you. This is Pastor Bryce with Christ Ambassadors United Worship Center and with Christianity with Simplicity. It is always a blessing and we welcome you to Wednesday's Word Inspirational Moment. It's hump week and it's the middle of the week and it's really like my favorite time of the week because it allows me to just kind of digress a little bit. I'm in the middle of the week. You're in the middle of the week. And God has allowed you to get through Monday and Tuesday. And now you just have this moment of Wednesday. And oftentimes for most churches, Wednesday is a time when we have Bible study. So let me encourage you, if you're not going to a Bible study at your church, it is a wonderful time and it is a time um, that you can get a plethora of information and knowledge and grow in the Word of God. Don't just save church for just Sunday mornings, but use Wednesday and any time that there is a service that is present at your home church, you are welcome. We're praying and we're preparing for God as He is um, uh, moving to open the door so that we can start off with some small Bible um, discovery groups here in the city of Orlando. So we're so thankful. So listen, I'm so happy what God is doing and I'm just still motivated in the teachings that I've been on with just the attractiveness and being attractive to God so that he wants to bless, he wants to favor, he wants to heal. And, and in fact, he can't help but do the things we're requesting because of the fact that we are attractive to him. There is something in your spirit, there is something in your heart, there is something about you that is attracting the Holy Spirit into your life. And I was thinking today, you know, oftentimes, and we go through so much to look physically attractive to someone else, whether we are doing our hair, or we do our makeup a certain way. Men, you may dress and, and, and wear certain clothes and to have the hair cut or to have, uh, maybe you wear a fro, maybe you, you're a beard. Um, I know that's the, the new thing, men with beards and um, looking sharp, looking nice. And there's something that um, when, when you are dressed that way, it is not only to make yourself feel good, but also because you, you, you're making yourself attractive to someone's eye. You're making yourself attractive. Maybe you're going on an interview and you, 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 when you were preparing that outfit, it was not only so that you could um, be dressed for the interview, but to be found impressive enough to be attractive so, so that the person that is interviewing you would take the time and there would be something that will be memorable. Well, again, on this, this moment of time, we're still talking about being attractive to God. And I want to do everything that I can do to attract the blessings, the healing of God, the, the fact that when I pray and I send up a petition, to the Lord. He cannot help but be attracted into my presence and 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 pull me into his presence so that those things that I am petitioning are going to truly be granted. I don't want anything and I'm encouraging you to take a look at yourself. Take a look at your spiritual life. You know, we got the physical part covered. We know how to dress we know how to talk. We know how to um, act churchy. We know how to um, quote scriptures. But there is something that God is desiring from each one of us. And he is desiring a deeper relationship. He is desiring for you to um, surrender all. And when we begin to strip off this, this um, inner outward appearance of trying to please man, but to simply be focused on pleasing God. He has such great things in store. My friends and my brothers and sisters, if you're really wanting God to give you that dynamically big year, take a look and question yourself. Is God being attracted to come to me? Are the things that I'm doing being attractive enough that it's getting God's attention? I want to focus on a word this today that uh, many of us probably don't think about that could cause the Lord not to be attracted to us. 
And the word is to be disobedient. Disobedience. Disobedience is when we are refusing to do what is being requested. And God says, I desire you to be obedient. Many of us feel a sense of failure when it comes to obedience to God's words in our lives. Um, but if we're honest with each other and we're being honest with God, uh, and, you know, in some way, in some shape or form, we all have missed the expectations that have been outlined in the scriptures about how we as believers should be obedient. I tell you, to, to really truly be obedient to God, there has to be faith. There has to be the faith enough in God that when he tells you to do something, when he gives the instruction to go or he gives the instruction to stay, there has to be enough faith in God that you're saying, God, I totally get it. I trust you. And so therefore, I'm going to stay. I'm going to um, go. I'm going to do whatever it is that you have instructed me. And when we begin to show that obedience to God, well, again, faith has to step in. And the Bible says that without faith, it's impossible to please God. So when I show faith to God, that by itself begins to get his attention. And then when I am willing to be obedient to what he is telling me and to what the word of God says, then that gets his attention. And remember, when we are doing things to become attractive, it's all about getting the person's attention. You know, I, I, I dress up. I like looking good. And I know I'm not the only female that likes to look nice. I like nice shoes. I like nice jewelry. One of the things that I do for my me time, I get my nails done. That's my thing that I love to do. I just found a new place that I love. I said, Lord, this is my new me place. And so I go through that to, to get the physical. And, and then the other thing I'm doing to make myself even attractive, to, more attractive to me for me, is I'm working on losing weight. But again, look at the things we do to make this physical being look good. So the question is, are you willing to put that same energy into the spiritual being so that it is attractive to God? I don't know about you, my friends, but this year I'm speaking it. I believe it. I keep just dancing in excitement because this is a dynamically big year. And I am trusting God to do everything that he has promised that he would do. But I'm like, God, I just want to be attractive. I want to attract your blessings. And so, Lord, I'm finding that I got to take a relook at obedience. And I'm encouraging you to take another look at your obedience level. Are you being obedient? Are you following the voice of God? Are you following the word of God? The, you know, we can't do the word in part. It has to be done in the fullness. You, you can't say, you know, Lord, I'm not going to steal, but I'll kill. I'm not going to rob from man, but I'll rob from you because I will not give you the 10% that the word of God says to give to the storehouse. I'm going to listen to what other people say and, and, and not do that part. But God says, will you be willing to be fully obedient to the best that you can so that you can attract what I have in store for you? God wants to bless you and I tremendously. In this moment of time, this is, you know, so many of us have been going, have gone through so much in 2017 and 2018. And you're like, God, you've got to do something different for me this year. You, God, have to really, God, change some things. I'm, I'm about to lose my mind. This week has been rough. This month has been rough. So, God, what is it that I need to do? And God is saying, take a re-look re at your obedience. Are you really being obedient? 
Are you being obedient when I said to you to, to get into the word and, and to read and to know my words? Know the, the things that I, I have promised. Are you being obedient that instead of you complaining, you're worshiping God? Instead of you allowing your mind to begin to wander and to focus on what you don't have or what you think you should have, but is your mind being transformed and renewed by me? Are you being obedient to get into the word and to pray and failing not to assemble yourselves together into the house of God? It's good to watch TV. It's great to listen to the radio. But God wants you to find that, that house of worship where you can go and be part of that fellowship. Are you being obedient? Are you being obedient and not following what others are telling you to do? Obeying God in small matters is an essential step in receiving God's greatest blessings. Can I say that one more time for the radio? Obeying God in small matters is an essential step in receiving God's greatest blessings. When you're willing to be obedient to God, you're saying, Lord, it's not about me. It's about you. It's not about me pleasing my flesh. But it's about me pleasing you so that your kingdom influence can rest on me and your kingdom influence can be used so that others who do not know you in the pardon of your sin will come to know you, Jesus Christ, and say, Lord, here am I. All God wants is obedience. Oh, that is so, you know, we say sometimes, I say to the um, kids when, you know, we're just kidding, playing around in the house, and I say, they'll do something. I go, oh my goodness, that is so not sexy. And I can imagine God sometimes with some of the things we're doing, he goes, that is so not attractive to me. That attitude you have of not being grateful is so not attractive. The fact that you always want to complain about everything, that's so not attractive to me. The fact that as you, you, you come to the, to the house of worship only when you need something for me, that's not attractive to me. I'm looking for obedience. I'm looking for the one that will be willing to do as I have spoken. One of my children... She loves sometimes to question everything. There's a question or extra statement. And I imagine some of you have children just like that or people in your lives. They can never just take it and run with it. And so many of us as Christians, we don't want to take it what God has spoken and run and do what he said or go where he says. We want to have a full plan. We want the plan laid out. We want step one, step two, step three. And God is saying, in this season, I need people who are going to be obedient and ready and ready to move. Ready to do when I say do. Ready to give when I say give. That's what I'm looking for. That's what attracts me. And then he says, your obedience keeps that heart. When you are obedient, you have a heart for God. You have a heart for his worship. You have a heart to please him. Lord, I just simply want to be obedient. You know, when, when, when we understand how the blessings flood us, when we are obedient, we begin to really um, invest and the kingdom blessings that God has spoken in his word. So Lord, I already know my heart has to be pure. I have to have a heart of love. I cannot sit here with an unforgiven heart and think that I'm going to attract you. Because if my heart is unforgiven, I'm sure not going to be obedient to you. If my heart doesn't have love in it, I'm not going to be obedient to you when you say to me to love everybody. 
I'm not going to be obedient in sharing your love because I'm going to be looking. There are certain people I don't want to love because I don't like the things that they do. There are certain people I don't want to love because they don't church like I church. There is a certain group of people that I don't want to love because they don't seem to worship you like me. But God says, he says, you're going to be known by the love you have for one another. So that's being obedient. So when I can be obedient and showing the love like the word of God says, if you do me wrong, I still love you. If you do me wrong and I have an issue with it, I can get a witness and you and I can come together. And see, when we come together and and fix that thing, it allows the devil not to have any kind of um, uh, connection or any power in the situation. But we have to be obedient to God's word. Lord, I want to draw you into me. I want to be in your presence. I I want to worship you. I want you, God, to want to be in my presence. All taste and see that the Lord is good. We know obeying, it's not easy. We all fall short. Jonah fell short. He got upset. In the Bible, Jonah, he got upset because God delivered Tarshish. And he decided, you know, he wasn't going to go. And God had to put him in the belly of a fish because of his disobedience. There are many. Saul was disobedient. And because of his disobedience, he lost being a ruler. And the anointing that was on him left. Being obedient is essential to a Christian's lifestyle. Being obedient is one of the main magnetic things that will attract God's favor and his blessings. It will attract healing. It will attract deliverance. It will attract the power and the anointing of God. That when you speak, things have to move. Because God honors your obedience. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. I love in in the book of Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter. You know, it, it tells us that we'll be blessed in our going out and blessed and are coming in and God will will bless our our animals and he'll bless our land but all of this can only happen through obedience being obedient is a huge attraction from our God in the book of Proverbs 4:23 it says above all above all else guard your heart for it is the wellspring of life There's an old gospel song that says, how about your heart? Is it right with God? That's the thing that counts today. If my heart is right, if my heart wants to please God, then that means I want to be obedient. I want to be obedient to his will. I want to be obedient to his purpose. And in order for me to be, when when I'm saying I, I want to be obedient, Lord, I'm willing to submit myself and humble myself. And I'm willing to say, push me out of the way. The songwriter said, more of you and less of me. Because the more I have of you and the less I have of me, you are attracted to that spirit, not my flesh. God's not attracted to your flesh. He doesn't care if you have on makeup and and your beautiful fake eyelashes. He doesn't care, my brothers, if you're wearing a a, a $100 suit uh, uh, up to a $10,000 suit. Your physical appearance doesn't attract him per se, but it's your heart. It's your love. It's your faith. It's your obedience. It's your willingness that attracts God to you and when Jesus comes to us and he's in our presence 
and we're in his presence, there is an, an, a revolution of anointing and power and the overflowance of his spirit that begins to shake the heavens. So whatever that has been prayed on earth, it has been decreed on earth and decreed in heaven and it connects. And therefore our heavenly father, our good father, he comes and he sees and he rescues and he answers and he heals and he delivers and he gives us the favor and he gives us the desires of our heart because our heart says, God, I want to be obedient enough that what I'm requesting lines up with your will and your purpose. I am expecting from God a dynamically big year. I'm walking in it. I see it happening. I believe it is happening. I am tasting it. I am touching it because my faith is in God. And I know that he's attracted to me because I have an attitude of gratitude. I have a heart of worship. I have a heart free and, and that God has released any unforgiveness that was in my heart. I'm free. Will you allow God to be attracted to you because you're going to be obedient? I yield, Lord. I come, Lord humbly before you lord i know you i know you want me to, to instead of going into medicine you're telling me to go into missionary work i had my plan all set out i'm gonna i, I was gonna graduate from high school and i had a, a four year plan for college but lord you just changed that you told me to go to a two-year college get my as degree and and you're telling me to put forth work in mission work the question now is will you be obedient so that the holy spirit can allow his blessings and his favor and his kingdom influence the rest on you god is pricking someone's heart at this very moment you know you have not been obedient you have heard the voice of god and god says how many more times do you want me to keep telling you i'd rather be attracted to you from your obedience than to say, I'm not attracted to you anymore. Yeah, I know the Bible says he'll never leave us, nor will he forsake us, but there's something before that. We have to be obedient. We have to be willing to, to give up us, self, flesh. And then we're able to eat the good of the land. We're able to, to witness the blessings that he has for us. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. God, we thank you this day. We thank you for this moment in time. We thank you, God, for being who you are. We can't do nothing without you, but God, we pray that we are attractive to you. Lord, I want to attract your favor. I want to attract your healing. I pray, God, that the persons that are listening to this station, that they will want to be attractive to you. That your kingdom influence will rest upon them in their home, on their jobs, in their car, wherever they feet walk for their feet are being guided by you. For you are a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. May we be obedient to your voice. May we be willing to, to move when you say move and to stay when you say stay and to give when you say give and to hold back when you say hold back. May we be obedient when you want us to share our testimony. And that spirit of shyness, I pray right now that it is removed and a spirit of boldness is released into that person that is too shy to tell their testimony. Oh God, may they be obedient to be a witness and to evangelize your word. For we are in a season of time that the people in this generation of time, they need to hear a word from you. 
May our churches stop trying to be attractive by pulling people in with the wrong influence. But Lord, may our churches get back on fire with the Holy Spirit and that they allow your word and your power and you to be the supreme presence in the house. May we be obedient to your voice. May we be obedient to your teachings. May we be obedient to everything that you want us to do. May our thoughts become captivated so that when we are in a mindset where the devil wants any person to think that they're defeated, let them remember that they are a child of the king. And that they are attractive to God. We are fearfully and we are wonderfully made. And wondrously are your works within us. So Father, we thank you. We thank you for again this moment in time. This moment that we are attracting favor from the heavenly realm. That person that is going to interview tomorrow, I thank you, God, in advance for the power of your favor and your kingdom influence. Unlocking the door and allowing them to get the job that many said they would never get. But Lord, you have honored their obedience. You have honored their sacrifices. You have honored, Lord, their praise and worship. And Lord, may it be so on tomorrow. That door that needed to be open is open. And they walk into the favor of your blessings. That person who has been obedient and has made sacrifice after sacrifice. And their body has become worn down. But Lord, we pray for healing right now. His rabasha. We pray for deliverance right now. We pray, God, that where they've been torn down, you build them up. You restore such a one. Thank you for college students. Thank you for students all across the country, elementary, middle school, high school. Lord, we thank you. For those that have been faithful, there are young Christians, Lord, and the enemy is trying to cause a a secular influence over their life. But God, we've already prayed that your power of your influence will safeguard them. We thank you, Father, for the spirit of obedience. And I pray, God, right now that someone that is not saved. They don't know you as their personal savior. But Lord, I hear you speaking to them. You are calling them by their name. You are calling him by his name. You're calling her by her name. And you're telling them that this is the right moment in time for them to give their life to you. May they yield to the voice and be obedient. And say, Father, forgive me of my sins. I, I, I'm sorry. I'm a sinner, but I'm asking you to forgive me. I repent. Come into my life. Come into my heart. And may they accept you as their personal Savior. Father God, we thank you because we believe that it is done. In the mighty, matchless name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 Oh, bless the name of Jesus. Well, listen, my brothers and my sisters, this is hump week. This is Wednesday. This is Wednesday's word of inspiration. And I hope you have been inspired today to be obedient so that you can embrace and welcome the favor and the attraction of God. We're still talking about being attractive to God. Don't spend so much time trying to make your outward appearance look like you're saved or like you're a Christian. Because the Word of God declares that God looks at our heart. 
He knows if there is deceit. He knows if there is lying. He knows if there is unforgiveness. He knows all of those things because he sees all. So my prayer for you on this week is that you understand that, Lord, I need to work on being more attractive to you. That my spirit is what you see. That you hear and you see my praise. You see my posture. I don't have a posture of my hands out to receive, but I have my posture with my hands up to worship you. And I have a heart to love and to obey you in the name of Jesus. Well, listen, my friends, I pray you have a wonderful week. We would love to hear from you as always. You can always reach out to us on our website, www.christambassadorsuwc.org. I would love to hear from you. You can email me. And, and if you have a prayer request, you can send us a prayer request. We're also on social media pages. We are on Instagram. We are on Facebook, um, Christ Ambassadors on, on Instagram, Facebook. And you can also find me on uh, social media as well under Melanie Bryce. And so it's a blessing to, to come before you. And I pray that you have a blessed remainder of your week. Um, may you continue to work on becoming and being even more attractive to God so that you can experience the fullness of your dynamically big 2019 year in the name of Jesus. May the grace of our Lord and Savior rest, rule, and abide with thee. Henceforth, now, and forevermore, we pray. Amen. God bless you. Shalom.